I had a lot of people connect to me on LinkedIn because I left Amazon. I posted I was left leaving Amazon. For those of you who follow the channel a lot, um, I've now had something like 700,000 people view the post that said, hey, I'm leaving from Amazon and I intend to pay it forward by helping out. So that, that blows my mind, right? We're closing in on three quarters of a million people who are interested. Um, and so what they mostly ask me though is how do I get a job at Amazon? Uh, and so I thought I would record an actual video that just answers that question but I wanna make it general interest. And so I also wanna address how you would get a job at any larger company. And I specify larger company because I can't discuss, small companies are different. Um, what I want all of you to do though, is give me questions at the end. Uh, if you actually wanna join Amazon, that's great. If you don't, um, that's okay too, but you can ask about other things like smaller companies and I can add them at the end to talking about how to target a job at Amazon and then how to target any company. All right, everybody, welcome. My goal here today is to talk to you about how to target Amazon as an employer. Most of you know me, but if you don't, I'm Ethan Evans. I retired last week, a week ago today, from 15 years in progressive positions at Amazon, uh, where I did well over a thousand interviews and hired roughly a thousand people. It's based on that experience I wanna share how you can prepare to interview well at Amazon, but more importantly, how you can try to get the chance to interview, which is our main topic. So <clears throat> today happens to be the day that Amazon held career day. Uh, you can check on amazon.jobs, but Amazon tends to have at this time about 100,000 open warehouse positions. I'm not really talking about those, but instead has close to uh, more than, in fact, 30,000 open professional office leadership jobs. Given that, how do you get one of those jobs? Well, the first thing with any company, and I am going to talk about how to get a job at any company and then list the Amazon specifics, is you need to know the company. And with, I'm mainly today going to talk about larger companies. With a large company, any of the Amazon, Google, Microsoft, or other industry large companies, you need to know what they're hiring for and where. So the point here, point number one, is do your research. Find out what they're hiring for, know their culture. So for Amazon specifically, the problem you're going to have is that we're hiring for way too much. How do you find the right job for you from 30,000 listings? And in fact, I know someone internal to Amazon works there right now who's trying to find her next position. And she was struggling, having been at the company for multiple years, to sort through those 30,000 roles to find her next job. Well, you face this from the outside with no help. So we're going to talk about how you can go about that. But thing number one, get a sense of what they're hiring for. Thing number two, know the culture. So for Amazon, the culture is in the leadership principles. And if you haven't Googled the Amazon leadership principles and you're thinking that you might wanna work at Amazon, you need to um, do that, read them, and understand at Amazon they're actually used. Lots of companies have propaganda on their web that they don't actually follow. But Bezos and his S team, his senior team, wrote the leadership principles, and they've revised and updated them every five years for multiple cycles, they actually represent the culture of the company, or at least the aspirational culture of the company. So knowing those matters, and it matters because every interviewer you will talk to is actually in the internal system assigned two of those leadership principles to go talk to you about. So their questions may seem random or may seem like they're just coming up with them, but they're trying to figure out how you perform or might perform on two of those principles. Now, sometimes those principles will be combined with digging into your domain-specific skills. So if you're a lawyer, they may be asking you about contract law or corporate law. 
If you're a finance person, they may be asking you about business cases or balance sheets. But even in that context, they're going to be looking for how do you match up with the culture? Other people will be doing pure cultural fit interviews, pure leadership principle interviews. Um, different companies interview very differently and seek very different things. A lot of companies would find it weird to be talking about culture and they would spend most of their time on what are called your hard skills. If you're a programmer, how good of a programmer are you? If you're a designer, let's see your portfolio. Amazon does those things, but what we have found over time is that your performance uh, is more driven by your culture fit and native skills than by your specific expertise. So we check that you have domain expertise, but we focus on fit. So be aware of that. Um, now, going back to researching the company, this first major step, in a large company, one thing you need to know is that different locations and divisions may have quite different cultures and needs. So for example, um, Amazon hiring in Europe is going to be different than Amazon hiring in the Seattle headquarters is going to be different than Amazon hiring in different regionally distributed locations. The culture of those locations may also differ. Now at Amazon specifically, the biggest division is going to be Amazon Web Services, which is a pure technology services company, and Amazon.com or Amazon Retail, which is the e-commerce giant. They have different focus. Um, AWS is extremely technology driven and has a DevOps culture where the engineers own the operations of their own systems and also has a large sales and B2B support focus. So there you're looking at a tech culture, a pure tech company culture. When you move to the retail side, it's fragmented. You have a media culture that's creating in Amazon Studios uh, in Los Angeles, uh, new media properties. You have an advertising sales org. You have new research and development groups that are standing up physical stores. And the biggest division you have, besides what you would think of as e-commerce, is the fulfillment center operations world, which is all about logistics and supply chain. These are different groups. They have different interests. Logistics and supply chain is about error reduction and optimization. They're going to be looking for people that can turn one error per thousand into one error per million. And you have to have that kind of QA mindset. Um, whereas uh, AWS is going to look for coding geniuses that can create the next new service. And retail is going to look for business geniuses that can negotiate and that can grow businesses double digit percentages so think about where you fit and the point is don't just seek a job at amazon or at any company seek a job at a company you fit by the way amazon is a very hard driving culture this is well known and well documented and we'll talk about glassdoor in a minute as a resource but if you don't want a very demanding job if that's not where you are in your life or your career Amazon is not the place for you. On the other hand, if you want a company that has the resources and the, and the platform to let you build and invent new things at the cost of you working very hard, then Amazon is a great place. And obviously I had a great career there because that's what I was after. The fundamental point here though, is that a large company, you've got to pull it apart. Yes, it's all Amazon, but it's not one culture to target from hiring. Okay, items two and three come together. Item two is you have to research the specific job you want. Item three is networking. And the reason those two come together is because the more you can network in, the more you can get advice on what job you fit. And the more you know what you're looking for, the more you can target who to network with. So these become a virtual loop that you use to hone in. And we'll talk about the goal of that loop in a minute. I already mentioned 30,000 open jobs makes it very hard to target a specific job. Here is a terrible idea. 
write your resume, find some job on Amazon that vaguely matches what you would like to do and submit your resume online. I don't know the full stats and I probably couldn't share them if I did, but what I know is that Amazon looks at several million resumes a year uh, just for our corporate jobs. Throwing your resume into that multi-million resume pile, undirected and unsolicited, has very little chance of getting you what you want. It could work. It does often work because we hire a lot of people. But remember, you're throwing your resume into a pile of millions. And by the way, um, another stat I can share generally is that hundreds of thousands of those resumes get selected for some further glance. So they get sent to a hiring manager. But again, you're talking about hundreds of thousands. You're somewhere in that mass. This is the worst type of basically hope being your strategy. So yes, if you have no other resort or if your resume is incredible, apply blindly. But that is the least good option of what we're going to talk about. So one thing you can do is spend a lot of time on the website trying to find a few jobs that interest you. I'm going to assume you do that and start there. Now, for other companies, generally this same math is going to apply. I've seen stats on Google and elsewhere. They get millions of resumes a year also. So if you're seeking a large company, you're going to see millions of competitors. You have to find ways to stand out from that. And by the way, right now in 2020, when I'm recording this, COVID is a thing and a lot of people are unemployed. I was talking to a guy who runs a headhunting firm yesterday, and he was telling me that right now for each job where they used to have to go out and beg people to apply, because he does healthcare IT, which is not that sexy of a vertical to try and find people for, he had to go out and beg people and offer them more money to get them to consider moving. Now when they post a job on their site, they get hundreds of applications. So at the current time, it's a buyer's market. And as a result, remember, you have to stand out from the hundreds. I'm going to talk to you about how to do that. It's very possible. So find a few jobs. Step one, find a few jobs you like or you think you like. Step two, you're going to have to network if you want to do better. Now, everyone gets scared of the word networking. And a lot of college students are like, but I don't have a network. We're going to take care of all of that right now. First, networking. Why network? It's your way to get referred in. It's your way to stand out of the giant pile. Second, I want to give you the encouragement that even though these companies are getting millions of applications and have to sift through hundreds of thousands of resumes, it's also true that they have 30,000 open jobs. That's public. Amazon did a career fair today to talk about it. So they obviously want you to know that there's lots of jobs you can come get. So remember, when you're despairing and you're thinking about this task, remember there's someone in my old job on the other side of the fence who's got dozens of open roles to fill in their team and is scratching their head trying to figure out where am I going to get qualified people for all these jobs. So actually, both of you are equally frustrated. Um, given that, it's a matter of making contact with the right person. It's a matter of getting in touch with the right people to help you. So how do you do that? Well couple things. First, if you know anyone at the company, and by the way, it would be weird in some ways in a company of almost a million people and like a hundred thousand or more in so-called white collar or office jobs that you didn't know anyone or you didn't know someone who could introduce you. It's just a matter of finding them. But the place to look 
is your old college classmates and your former co-workers if you've already had some jobs. Somebody probably works at one of these large companies or somebody's mom or somebody's dad or somebody's cousin. Find someone there, anyone to start with. I want to make this really easy. And then networking is getting in touch with a real human and not saying, hey, will you submit my resume? I want this job. That's, um, that's taking things too fast on the first date. Networking is a little bit of a relationship. And by the way, this is my place to give you the bad news, also the good news. The bad news is, if you've come here looking for magic words you can say to get hired at Amazon or some other large company where you don't really need to put in any more effort, if your hope is at the end of this short video, you can take my five magic words, put them at the top of your resume, and send them to Amazon or wherever it is you want to go, and do no more work, I'm sorry, I have only two pieces of advice for you on how to do that. Way number one to get a job with no extra effort is be godlike. Be famous in your field. Wait for us to call you. Happens all the time. We have people who call known experts and try to entice them. So step one, just get a phenomenal job. Do 20 years of great work. Publish a lot of papers. Be well-renowned and highly promoted. And we'll call you. Step two, if you don't prefer that, be really lucky. Stick your resume into the mass grist mill I described earlier. And because you are naturally a blessed and lucky person, just wait. That'll work as well. But otherwise, I'm describing a process to get yourself there with work. So networking takes some work. You got to build up the relationship. Great news. <clears throat> if you want to build a network, all you have to do is ask people legitimate, honest questions. So you reach out to someone you know or someone you've been introduced to and you say, hey, I'm considering joining Amazon. I'm interested or fill in the blank for your company. Can you tell me a little bit more about what it's been like for you to work there? Or can you share a little bit more about your favorite project? Now, important tip. This is classic Dale Carnegie, how to win friends and influence people. You are asking them something about them. You don't start the relationship by saying, here's the three things I'd like from you. Or can you tell me a bunch of stuff I'd like to know? You ask them what they've done, but it's got to be legit. You have to be interested. Um, it takes a little bit of effort. What are you trying to do? You're trying to build a relationship so you can ask them and say, hey, that's cool. I love that you did a project on Amazon's drone fleet or Amazon's autonomous vehicle fleet or their last mile delivery or... AWS web services. Could you, do you think you could help me a little bit with where I might fit? Or I'm interested in this job in finance. Um, do you know anyone who could tell me a little bit about that? But you make an easy ask after you've built some relationship. A great question is you say, look, I'm a graduate. I was talking to someone on LinkedIn earlier today. I think she's a new graduate in psychology it strikes me so she has a ba i think in psychology is my memory of this it's not a degree we normally seek you can say look i have a ba in psychology do you have any idea what sorts of jobs i might fit at amazon this goes back to the point that there are thirty thousand jobs you want to apply for one that matches you you ask the person Given my background, where do I fit? You get them engaged. Why? Once they start to take ownership of solving a problem or thinking about a problem, they then are invested. What you're looking to do here, though, is get introduced to somebody else. And you work your way to, oh, hey, I do know somebody who's also a psych major. Or I do know someone um, who hires people from unusual backgrounds because their job we found we can train people into. And you work your way to where you're talking to someone who's willing to help you find the right job. Now, by the way, most people will ghost you. That's okay. Remember, there's a million people at Amazon. 
even if 99% of them ghost you, there's something like 10,000 you can talk to. If you go only to the professional side and reduce those numbers in order of magnitude, even if you get ghosted by 99% of the 100,000 white collar employees, there's still 1,000 people who will engage you. It's a numbers game and doing the work to hunt them up. And these people, because they're people like I was when I was there, will try to help you and try to help you find the right job. So it's a dance. You start with some jobs you're interested in and you ask about them. But then you take guidance on what jobs might be better fits. You ask about different divisions and should I be talking to another division or is there a different type of group? And then you take that advice and ask for an introduction. Do you know someone there? Can you, can you introduce me or connect me to someone? By the way, it's fine to talk to recruiters, but recruiters are motivated to fill specific roles quickly. They will try and help you if it helps them. They will not network for you as strongly as if you get hiring managers and employees interested. And so now let's get to the money point. The money point is you're looking for an internal referral. Most large companies get 20 to 40% of their employee base from internal referrals. Amazon is no different. So employees are referring in, let's call it roughly a third of the new staff. Why is it such a high hit rate? Well, a, ref a referral from me is highly trusted and highly taken as, oh, we should talk to this person. I don't just mean me because I was a VP. I mean any internal employee is testifying and say this person is a good risk. They're a good bet. They're worth your time. Now remember, as a hiring manager, I'm mostly worried that I'm going to hire someone who doesn't work out. They're not going to do the work I need them to. Plus, I now have a problem. So Having an empty job is a problem. There's work that needs to be done and is not getting done. But hiring the wrong person doesn't solve that problem. There's still work that needs to be done and it's not getting done. And now I have a new problem, which is a performance management problem. So when I hire, maybe I should be in an optimistic mindset and only thinking about how great it's going to be. But part of my brain is risk reduction. Having someone inside the company say, no, no, I know Ethan, he does good work, reduces my risk fear, and that moves you up as a candidate. So bottom line, what you are seeking at any company when you network is to be referred by an internal employee. The weakest type of referral, which is still better than applying on the web, is for them to say, yeah, I'll submit your resume. I'll send it to recruiting. I'll send it to HR. Those resumes in the Amazon world go into a special category and a special system. And so um, automatically, they're getting a different look and different treatment than ones coming off the web. They're more highly valued and more sought after. So the dead minimum thing you're looking for is any employee you can get to do an internal referral for you for the job you've decided you want. Now let's talk about what's really great. Let's go all the way to the far end of the spectrum. What you want is for someone to say, I know the hiring manager for your job and I will introduce you to them. And so usually an email, but can be anyway, they send a note that says, hey, Fred, my friend Ethan is looking for a job. He's interested in the role you have, and I think he'd be great for it. I've copied him here so you can talk about it. This is the most powerful type of referral. Now, there's a lot of gray between these two. Maybe someone will say, well, I'll email your resume to the hiring manager, but they won't give you that person's name or contact info. That's still way better than going through the recruiting machinery. Amazon's recruiters are great and very hardworking, but they have a lot to do and they have a lot of other candidates to worry about. You want to be in the hands of the hiring manager with a re recommendation from someone in the company. So when you network, that's what you're looking for. And what you're ultimately asking is, so do you know or can you find out who this job reports to? 
And can you refer me? Would you refer me? Now, interesting point. I talk a lot about the use of LinkedIn. LinkedIn can let you cheat. If you go to LinkedIn right now, I used to run the group called Twitch Prime, uh, now called Prime Gaming, but you can do this for any group at Amazon. You can search and find people who work for that group, often by matching up the job description and what they say about the job and searching well on LinkedIn, you can actually figure out the hiring manager all by yourself and either reach out to a friend to be referred to him or introduced or reach out to them and say, I'm looking at a job on Amazon's website. It seems like that job might be in your organization or might report to you. I'd be interested in learning more. Could you put me in touch with the person uh, hiring for it? This isn't all black art. You can actually get this done yourself. So I realize it's easier to describe than it is to go do. I said earlier, you have to do this work yourself and it's gonna take work. I'm sorry for that. I don't know a way that you can target and break into a company without doing some legwork. All right, so a few more things. Um, if you're just graduating, I hear all the time from college students, well, I don't know anybody. All of, my co all of my classmates are looking for jobs like I am. Great, here's a trick. Go to your career center. And by the way, if you graduated from university, you can call them back up and ask them this. Go to your career center and say, hey, I know Amazon hires on our campus. Do you know anyone who's there, who took a job there that I could talk to or that you could introduce me to? And now you have a perfect end because when you contact that person, you say, Sarah Smith, Sarah, um, I'm graduating from Acme University like you did last year, and I'm interested in joining Amazon like you did. Could you tell me a little, as, a, as an Acme University graduate, could you tell me a little bit about how you find it? Most people, and it's bizarre and psychological, but it's our tribal nature, feel more responsibility to help people that they identify with and help people they don't. Um, and so if you can make that connection and say, yeah, I'm going to graduate from Acme this year, um, that gives a huge leg up on the odds that Sarah will take the time to write you back. Um, it doesn't always work, but you're always looking for that common point, that connection. Um, <clears throat> all right. So two last points I want to cover. Number one, if I haven't made this clear yet, do not overly spam applications. I see people make this mistake where they say, oh, there's 30,000 jobs. I will apply to 2,700 of them. I will take every job that is for product management and apply for it, all 2,000. This works against you. Think about the system on the back end. What we see, what the first, those only go to recruiters, and what do the recruiters see? They see your resume come in over and over and over and over and over again. It conveys to them, number one, that you're desperate, which probably means you're a loser, because desperate, if you weren't a loser, you wouldn't be desperate. Now, you're going to say, well, that's not fair. Yes, it's not fair and it's mean. But people sometimes are unfair and mean, and you're showing every sign of being desperate. Um, and you don't want to look desperate. You want to look valuable. Second thing, turns out in a big company, all those jobs belong to different recruiters. Now, what that means inside Amazon, and it's going to be the same in other companies, is either those recruiters have to do the work amongst themselves to figure out where you fit and who should take charge of your case, or let's assume you're actually quite good and they want you, they have to fight over you. You might, um, and in Amazon, there's this idea of a thing called a split loop where you can interview for up to two groups at once. And so we'll bring you in for an interview and you'll have half your day with job A and team A and half your day with job B and team B. The problem with a split loop is it's not as good for either team. It's better for you and better for the company, by the way. It's better for you because you get choice of two jobs and you get placed in the best place. It's better for the company because you get to join the place you fit best, if you fit one of them best. 
but it sucks for me, the hiring manager. It means even if I like you, I have a 50% chance I'm going to lose you to someone else. So from my viewpoint, a split loop sucks. And from the recruiter's viewpoint, who's basically scored on filling roles, having to share a candidate with someone else works against them meeting their goals. So when you spam your resume into half a dozen or a dozen jobs, you're essentially signaling that you're desperate, you're probably not that good, but if you are good, we're gonna have to fight over you with other internal groups. And why don't I just move on to this other resume next to yours where I don't have that problem and they seem to be legitimately interested in just our job. So you'd have no way to know this if you haven't thought through it from a large company perspective, but spamming lots of applications to a large company essentially works against you, is my opinion and my experience. All right. Um, <clears throat> last part, interviewing. Let's assume I've done lots of videos on interviewing. You can find them on my YouTube channel. If you're watching this video there, there's a whole playlist that contains interview tips. But for Amazon specifically, as I already mentioned, you're going to be interviewed on a combination of your leadership principles and your domain specific skills. The second thing I would say is generally for any company, prepare to know how they interview. Are they going to want to see a portfolio? Are they likely to have you bring a business case or put you on a whiteboard to demonstrate skills? The last thing you want to do in an interview is be thrown off by the process. So don't allow yourself to be thrown off. Be prepared. You can find out a lot of information about big company interviews through Google. You can find out a ton more through Glassdoor and other sites. Honestly, for a company like Amazon, many candidates have gone out on the web and listed every question they were asked. So there is no excuse for being surprised by phone screen or interview questions from a large company. Now, again, it's effort. If you're really good, I have candidates all the time, not all the time, but sometimes who do no prep because they know they're really good and they know they have great resumes and they already have a job. So we're asking them to come work for us. So they're not working that hard to prove they're great. But if you're watching this and you really want into a company, presumably you're not in that lucky situation. And so this kind of prep work, there's no excuse for being caught off guard in an interview. Practice with typical questions. Get a list of those questions. Don't read them all. Find one. Hand it to your best friend or your spouse and say, okay, I'm going to take my resume here. You take my resume and ask me these questions and let's do an hour on them. Let's do two hours on them. Remember, being comfortable in this scenario is important. Think about how unfair it is. Here I am. Now, I'm somewhat unusual, but not completely unusual. I've done in my life about 2,500 interviews. How many times have you been interviewed? I know in my case, I've been interviewed for jobs in my whole life, maybe 10 times, maybe 15. I don't know. So you're bringing a knife to a gunfight. You're coming into a room with someone who interviews for a living and you've done it 10 times. If you haven't practiced, I have a hundred to one advantage on you. Now, in my case, I'm just trying to find out if you're a good match, but if someone's trying to zing you or trying to find the weakness in your resume, or you have a weakness that you wanna handle well, remember, the person on the other side of the table may be way more practiced and polished at this task than you are. So take a gun to a gunfight. All right, last thing, and I hate to say it, but it is completely true. Data shows that the number one and two factors in many interviewing settings are not your knowledge and ability, but they are appearance and enthusiasm. Um, so look decent. And be enthusiastic. If you need to coffee up or Red Bull up beforehand to have energy, or if you're normally an introvert and you need to nest and withdraw so you can give everything you can, understand people like to hire people that look like they'd like to work with them. Again, this is the tribal wiring. I'm considering bringing you into my tribe, my clan, my family. 
intellectually, I care a lot about can you do the job. Subconsciously and emotionally, I care a lot about do I want to sit next to you and do you seem cool? Do I want to share a beer with you? Do I think you'd be fun to go to lunch with? Or do I think you're going to drive me crazy? And by the way, do you smell or look dumpy? And again, may seem mean, may seem unfair. Since I no longer work for Amazon or any other company, I can talk about the fact that these factors matter. But be aware that how you present yourself is a huge factor. There's plenty of psychological research that shows that what interviewers actually do is they make a subconscious decision about you in the first 30 to 60 seconds, and then they spend the next hour writing down things that verify what they already believe. If you can get them liking you at the handshake, virtual over Zoom today, physical and other circumstances, the rest of your interview has a huge chance of going better. And so with that, those are the prepared remarks I wanted to make about how to get a job at Amazon. You can substitute the culture and networking to any other company to do the same things. Smaller companies are a little bit different, but I will wrap it up here, we'll end this video. There will be a separate video on my YouTube channel of the Q&A that follows with my Twitch community. We'll cut it into two parts. If you're curious what the community of viewers wanted to know after I said this, please go find that other video and follow the channel. Thank you very much.